Hi, Hi everybody. Man. What's your name, bro? My name is Matthew Young. And it's the AKA Matthew or Young. But listen to me. I'm not what people would ever consider to be common. No. I was in prison for 22 and a half years. Never charged with a crime, though. They said I robbed three drug dealers. And while I was there, they tried to say, Mr. Young has amply demonstrated that he is amoral, predatory, and an extremely dangerous young man who acts with little regards for the consequences of his actions and is highly recommended by the client diagnostic center that he is not provoked. I thought that was something to be proud of. Until I met an older man who said, Young Blood, come here, let me talk to you for a minute. And I said, Yeah. I said, He said, You know that paper? Yeah, I said, Yeah, I got it right here. You want to see it? He said, No. I know what it says. He said, What it says? He said, What do you say, boss? What it does say is that you're an animal and you need to be locked up. That blew me away. So I changed my life right here. But I didn't just complete uh, all of a sudden. Speak the Bible and it came to me. I couldn't understand the Bible. And I would tell him, I would get mad at him, pace back and forth in that cell. There was a cage. There was one time they put me in a cage for 36 months because I wouldn't tell him about some drugs in the prison. And all these other guys were turning into snitches making deals. Yes, they kept me locked up in a cage 24 hours a day for 36 months. Look me up. I, I filed a lawsuit against my, the attorney for $42 million. His name is John J. Gasson. J-O-N-J. And it's Gasson. G-H-A-S-T-I-O-N. Not O-N. It's I. -O -N. And I filed it. Uh, $42 million lawsuit against him in 2019. I was never even charged for the crime. But they held me in there. Like Nelson Mandela. I hate to say this to you. And and I'm not gonna cry that like that, but do understand this. My life has been one that's been pure hell. Hmm. When I was a kid, my mother hated my father. She said she hated me. She said I looked just like him. And she called me a rape baby. She hit me even when I was terrified of her. The one person who was supposed to be my protector was the one person that terrified me. She, um, One time she tied me to a chair and uh, put me in a closet. She had my ankles tied to the front of the chair and had my back. My hands tied behind my back. And she put me where I was upside down. That messed me up. Mm -hmm. Because I was in there for about a day or two, maybe. And I kept, and I started hearing. I don't have to I was, I didn't know what the fuck it was, but, um, hmm, uh, oh, excuse me, she, uh, I was, I asked him, please kill me. I, am. Um, I tried to hold my breath, so I tried to suffocate and myself. <sighs> now I'm a servant of the one true living God, and uh, it is Him that kept me alive all these times. Do you know that Yahweh is everything? They sent out a new Hubble scope, and it's out in space, and it took a picture, and it turned into a place where there's not that much light. Took pictures, pretty And what it took pictures of was so many galaxies, it stunned all the scientific communities around the world. If you had a computer, they'd make tens of thousands of calculations a day. They'd take that thing, cost 
30 million years to count those galaxies. Listen to this, okay? This is very, very important. How long do you think it'd take you to visit all the planets in just one galaxy? Hundreds of billions of stars, some of them having tens, twenty planets around it. Consider this. I think you, 30 million years, a computer, 30 million years, and counted it. 30 million, tens of thousands of calculations, let's say. A minute, a minute, a what, second, whatever. That's too many to even think about joining the event. And people said, What will we do for eternity? And don't be an idiot. God is everything. And in those galaxies, there's no sin. Only on this planet. And why? Because we're on this planet, we are an example for the angels. The two thirds that stayed in heaven. Some of them were locked, or were friends with the, with the one third, they fell. And they go to Yahweh and they say, Yahweh, can we forgive you? Give them and let them move them out of the prison? And he said, No. I want you to see with the lies of Lucifer and Toe on this planet. But if they got off this planet, imagine how much sin would be in those galaxies. Imagine how much pain and suffering would be in Texas. Had five beautiful babies, and she put them in a microwave. Can you imagine that? And the angels are sitting up there. Yahweh, let us stop. Please let me in for it. He's like, no. You will watch. Not because he's evil, but because he wants them to understand that Lucifer's trying to put Yahweh on trial. Okay, put him on trial and watch and see what Lucifer's lies do. You want to know how that works? It's like this Lucifer is a chairman. He has eight wings one, two to cover his feet, two to cover his midsection, two to cover his face, and two to stick straight out like this. And he's still over Yahweh's three. But another chair. And Yahweh sat in the middle and addressed the congregation. Hmm. At the end of the one congregation, Lucifer began to lie about other angels. And this is where things get very interesting because. Yahweh, when he started lying to him, Yahweh's looking at him like, huh, this creature thinks he can lie to me. But Yahweh has never been told not bedtime stories. So Lucifer's lies were like bedtime stories. So he's like, oh really? Tell me more. And he's like, mm, this creature really has an imagination. And at the end of the congregation, at the end of congregations, Lucifer would always tell Yahweh lies. And as he came out of there with Yahweh, and he was running around like this, with his little wings up like a peacock, and he thought he was the shit. He thought he was the shit. He's like, ah, yes, I've been spending all that time with Yahweh. And they're like, really? Hey, look at him. What y'all talk about? Hey, what we talked about is me. What? Really? Indeed. He's walking around like he's little chest out. All these other things. He's like, man, he's been spending time with y'all. And so, they began to lie. And so, they began to look up to this. This one began to lie to them about Yahweh. And Yahweh said, at the next congregation, one of you will be chosen for my son. And he said, and all of them, Oh, it was gonna be Lucifer. This for around, right? yeah, it's gonna be me. And <laughs> this is what and I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be you, oh, Lucifer man. You finna be this son. Come on. And when he, he was standing up there, God said, I choose Yahshua. Jesus. Be his son. And when he did, Lucifer was mad. He began to lie. Tell terrible lies about Yahweh. And when he did. Uh, Yahweh said at the next congregation, the wages of sin shall be death. This is for standing up above Yahweh like this. He, and when God, and the angels was like, death, what's death? Mm -hmm. what, what is sin? Okay, They don't know this. This is the father of lies, and he's the father of sin. He's the beginning of all these evil. 
And so, when he began to tell these lies, he was trembling up there when God was explaining to them what sin is and what death is. And when he did, he was full of sin of the trembling. And so at the end of the congregation, he was like, he didn't want to leave. And God's like, Lucifer, wait. I want you to tell me some more stories. He said, no, I gotta get it. And shut out of there. And he started lying to the angels about Yahweh. Saying, no, Jesus, Yahshua is to be his son, Jesus. And he said, because he knows he wants to try to enslave all of us. If he'd choose me, I'd admit all of you like God. And they were like, hmm. They saw, some of them saw choosing the side of the sinner. This evil, Thing. Uh, and y'all always said, you know, with Joshua, they said, Jesus, and he said, what are we going to do? And he, Jesus, he said, why don't we create a plant and put a man there with his wife? And Lucifer's going to go down there and try to perfect things. And he did exactly that. God created uh, Adam's first wife. Some folks call it, uh, call her, uh, I don't know, Where are you from originally, bro? I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque? Indeed. Did you, did you grow up with a mom and a dad? No. I grew up with a, with a beast that tortured me. It hit me and I was so terrified of her. I pissed my bed every time she, I was wake up and she comes in and I was like, oh shit. I was terrified of her. Was that your mom? Yeah. yeah. No, it was supposed to be. Yeah. What happened to your dad, bro? Huh? Mm -hmm. He couldn't take her. He couldn't do her whatever. But, but he left me in the hands of that crazy evil beast. But I was so terrified of him. How old were you? I was about 11 when, or 11 or 12 when she brought me up here and left me. But. That is some sin of a really long time. Remember, one time, she took us to a, a bar where she was, she went to the bar, and she went inside. I, uh, two brothers and two sisters. My oldest brother was a punk. He kept staying getting drunk. He was in the 60s. And, uh, when they came out, she said, they were sad that the people were talking and they, the group of them came out and said, well, there's not enough room for everybody and, um, and my heart sank. So I knew I was going to be a butcher for something. And uh, when they came to the car, my little sister, she used to grab my sister and when I, whenever she was going to do something bad at me, my little sister would grab my big sister and hold her. I got her clothes in. And I was like, oh, she's my heart was stuck. They came out and they got it right out of the car. My brother, my brother and two sisters. And they got in the car and they danced me. They said, oh, we'll come back for you. And I was in that phone call for about two, three days. And he, no. Then finally, the, the part of the guy came out and said, Hey, who's in? Uh, he said, no, I mean, Who's in? Who's in? He's been in a couple of days. And I said, <clears throat> I told him, I said, I didn't say it with that. Oh, they came and they got me. They took me to the hospital. I was badly dehydrated. And underfed. Um, There was a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to always bring me to the hospital. Something bad happened to me. And she would see me. A Mexican nurse. When she saw me that time, she looked at me and she started crying and ran after me. And she would come and get me. I'll make her come and get me. I don't know what her life is. I was a bird, but I became 
The cat thing is it. Because of me. You know, she got in food stamps. You know. Some piece of shit asshole told my mother she can get $24,000 if I pass, if I don't have it or some shit. She's got life insurance on me. I might have put rat poison in my oatmeal. Huh? Ain't that a bitch? They put it in your oatmeal? Yes. Uh, yeah, he fucked, so All it did was make me sleep. It's he fucked me up with that. Mm. And, uh... <laughs> so, with that... <sighs> how do you come to, how do you come to Portland, bro? She brought me and leave me. Uh, it was fucked up. It was fucked up. Really, that's disrespectful. Brought me here. And took me to JDH. And she asked me, did you steal me? I said, yes. She said, looked at me and said, you idiot. And I was like, but she taught me a lot of things, though. She said, you are in a class by yourself. Whatever you do, shoot for the moon. Because you know, it doesn't matter if you hit your mark because you'll still be somewhere up over the stars. She taught me a lot of things. She told me that bullshit is anything that don't tell you something meaningful and gives you no understanding. I was when she told more, she told me more things than any of those, but she hated me because of my father. She, those the other kids, she was his other fathers. She had five kids by four to five different men. Hello. You see that? No, let us still get up. Because they are anti-social vote and evil. I say hello. I'm not no, no homeless person is out here doing wrong. I am a servant of the one true living God, Yahweh. You got, you got any advice or any quotes, bro? Yes, I got some advice. Because this is everything. If you let me finish, you will have an understanding of why women have that curse. When he cursed, see... Lucifer went to the world, to earth, and he tried to get out of the sin, and then he couldn't. And when he got Eve to sin, and he said, oh, when he saw Eve and Adam having sex, he said, oh, that's how we can get him. He said, look, get Adam and do this way. Turn around and get out and get out of your pictures, because that way you can see Eve looked better than that. And when Eve turned around and had sex with him, she knocked him off him and ran towards the tree. And hold on. And as she did, she did a couple of ones. Let him catch you. And do this. And she did. And let's do that. So wh and what's your said, advice, bro? Is, what, my advice is to listen. Because as they got to the tree, Adam said, she, Eve said, hey, eat this fruit. Adam said, no, I don't want to tell I want you. She said, you can't come get me until you eat the fruit. Adam ate the fruit. And he said, oh, what is this you have done? Lucifer ran back into all the angels. He said, Look, Adam, it's not fair that Adam should die because Adam was, I taught, I tricked Eve on how to sin, I taught how to sin, I tricked Eve on how to eat the fruit, and then I told her how to get Adam to eat the fruit, and then he said, now, is it fair for Adam to die because he says he sinned? And there was this thing, no, he said, the wages of sin shall be death. Now, this is the important part of things. Listen, as he said this, he thought he had Yahweh. Yahweh had already chose Yahshua to be his son. Because he's seen this coming. And now, this is where <laughs> Lucifer thought he had Yahweh. He said, you got to take it back. You got to take back what you said about sin. The wages of sin being death. And I said, no. He told her, let's watch. And their war broke out. And two, but a third, one third of them fell. But if one angel is worth a thousand planets. So when we suffer, how much is that one angel for? He's internal. He's, he lives for the, the, the life of a thousand planets. Now here's the thing. When you consider this, 
God King, he said. Adam, you said it. Adam said, yes. He said, Adam, get out of the way. I'm going to kill her and make you a new one. And Adam's like, no. He stood in front of her. And, no, and she was at him, on the ground holding Adam's leg, and she was crying. And Adam said, no, do not kill her, because she's bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. I love her. Do not kill her. He stood between God and Eve, and he said, no, do not kill her. I love her. And you always said, okay. That is when he said there should be no adultery. And the man should cleave to his wife, and a woman should cleave to her husband. And this is where he told Eve, you'll be cursed on your womb, because that is what you use to trick Adam. And it took me six days to make the world, and I rest on the seventh. Every 30 days, your womb will bleed. And this is where the curse comes in. Every 30 days. You bleed, when you bleed, for six days, and on the seventh day you stop. But understand this, I am his one true servant. I know that's not the truth, they think they are. None of you know this world better than me. Not Billy Graham, not Coltman, not none of them. God, Melbourne told me things that would stun you. Like one thing. Alright, I'm gonna clean up this and you have to let me do this. Alright, thanks bro, man.